Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a special episode with the all new Land Rover Defender. Here today for you with auto fuel, on road and off road. With Thomas in front of the camera, Jonas behind the camera. All the details in exterior, interior and the driving experience. Enjoy this episode together with us in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! So we have two colors for you here today, here the Pangea Green or the Indus Silver. This new Defender, it does side something of the past generation, yes, the original model, but you can see it is definitely rounder than before, also has to do for example with pedestrian safety measurements and the whole model is really completely different. It is 20 centimeters or 8 inches wider, you can already see that here in the front, and the whole concept is different. So, no leather frame anymore. This is an aluminum unibody structure, also with an independent suspension and so on. So it's a really completely different concept, but still off-road capable, a weighting depth of 90 centimeters, so pretty high. Then the ground clearance at 29 centimeters, maximum 11 inches. Then you put it all the way up with the air suspension and approaching angle 38 degrees in the front descending angle 40 degrees in the rear. Still very massive. New technology then, LED headlamps are standard, option also with a matrix LED and you can see here the big Defender lettering in the front, so definitely a massive stance on the road. The short wheelbase version is called 90 and it is 4 meters 58 or 180 inches. This one here however is the 110 long wheelbase version, 5 meters 02 or 198 inches. And this is the auto fuel drinking game. From where does Thomas enter the stage? Yes, today from the rear. <laughs> you can always guess and then play a drinking game with your friends. Enjoy that. Well, but today, of course, with the Land Rover Defender here also in the side profile, you can see here both 110 version, long wheelbase version for you here today. The length I have given you are, by the way, including the spare wheel at the rear. You can also deduct that, then you have a shorter vehicle, so the chassis is not that long actually, as it sounds. Here we have this black look. You can see here we also have the black Defender lettering in the front, whereas the other vehicle is rather a brighter look. 19-inch wheels here on both cars today, here also with the black wheels, the other one has the bright wheels. And you can also get 18-inch steel wheels if your focus is primarily off-road. And if it's rather street, it goes up to 22 inches in the aluminum wheels, really depending on the purpose. Still here with this very upright structure, you can see the more robust look. Also, for example, as for the door handles, they're kept rather simple. It has moved more into a luxury direction, yes. However, you still have an off-road gear reduction, for example, and you still have the typical off-road features and Yes, it is still very off-road capable. We'll also see more of that very soon. So what do you think here already about design? Of course, this one here, rather this iconic citation again. So they really kept a lot of the elements and it is more off-road looking than the other cars in the lineup. However, price-wise, we are soon going to talk about that. Already quite expensive. The shorter 90 version, by the way, is also available with a base steel suspension in Europe if you are in the US or you go for the longer one the 110 air suspension is always standard however for off-road use it's of course even better because you can put the car even higher here the classic replacement tire in the rear I mean you could also drive with it demounted but usually when you buy this vehicle 
you want it either for the looks or then for the off-road usage. Then interesting, the Squircle tail lamps right here have an own styling. And what is also new is Sumoto trunk and so on. But here, when you open and close it, this one now has a soft close. So a soft close, electric soft close for a rear hatch for the Defender. Yeah, that's something. It's always funny to put that car up. So pump it up, you all gets a new meaning today. So I just activated here from the inside and then I can already feel how the car is going upward and it really makes a massive difference if you look at it from the outside, if you look at the wheel stand and we can also see a difference here to the car that is put all the way up in comparison to the car that is still on the normal niveau. So whereas all other manufacturers have no logic anymore in their naming system, Jaguar Land Rover, put a new logic in there and it's so simple. Four cylinders, diesel, D200 or D240, that's also the horsepower count. Here the D240 in this case, one, two, three, four, this symbolizes four cylinders. Not everything clean today, that's also off-roading guys. And on the other side, we have the petrol fraction. So petrol either a P300, that's still a four cylinder, or then this, the P400. Yeah, you guys in the US will love that. P400, the six cylinder petrol engine. This is also MHEV, so with mild hybrid technology. However, it will still consume more fuel. Yeah, but we're not going to test out that one later. key pretty simple and not too premium i would say door handles you see also kept a little bit more basic door closing sound yeah, it sounds quite good then inside of the doors this is a very nice material we know that already from the range rover evoke for example so it's a soft touch fabric material looks quite nice feels also nice and then this more robust real screw look here at the inside and i think that's a very cool approach then again here this soft touch fabric once more big door pockets as well and then there has this magnesium dashboard actually they thought about hanging the whole car right here for the IAA motor show they didn't go for it at, um, you know um, after all but yeah obviously thought about it so it has to be very very robust in this case and then again mixed with this nice soft inspired evoke fabric right here so it's a mix of new nice materials and then again the robust look and approach of the vehicle the seats here today have a fabric share you can see especially on the outside usually you would do it the other way around fabric inside and leather red on the outside for example um, however there are also pure fabric seats available on all markets and i would go for these of course because they are cooler in summer and warm in winter these here also with animal skin share according to my information steering wheel is also completely new of course here the two-tone scheme for the whole vehicle and again, this one will be illuminated when you turn on, on the car. You can always see digital instruments. Analog instruments are still base, optional than the digital ones. Soon more details to that. And let's get inside. You can also put the car lower, by the way, for an excess height. For example, you know, if you're a lady and wearing a fancy dress, or if your guest is wearing a fancy dress, for example. Um, and then, of course, put it higher, as we've shown you earlier. Well, then seating position, upright, really like, like a square seating position, and I really like that. So you have a good view all around, and it's actually quite comfortable. Also nice with we have already the fabric share here that makes it also, you know, um, a little better that you don't slide on it too much, although the seats are rather open. But also long term, I could rather imagine going long, you know, long away with this vehicle. This is 
mainly manual this heat here in this case also for pumping up your here um, quality here for example the lever is not top notch i think some parts are really very nicely done as i said as you know some of the fabric surface some other things are looking rather a little bit rougher so it's indeed a mix however considering you know 50k is about the entry price euros or dollars also depends on the 90 or 110 version but if you put a full spec one you can easily reach 80,000 euros or dollars or something and then you know it's of course doubtful if that's really worth the price however the competitor models are also not cheap at all here you can see by the way this is a fixed middle console with the armrest and so on However, there's also a version available both for the short and long wheelbase with a jump seat, so you have three seats in the front end. Interior overview, a horizontal stress. Here again, the soft touch fabric is really nicely done. Open area here, so this rugged look. Here's another USB supply, for example. 10 inch screen comes standard with a new software that will be also implemented in newer Jacko Land Rover models. On the left side, however, then. You start with analog gauges, optional 12.3 inch instruments. So that's the overview. Here the steering wheel again with this rugged look. The buttons here on the steering wheel do give you some haptical feedback, some kind of, yes. Um, also have a clicking sound. Volume controller is on the left. On the right side you set the cruise control and also heated steering wheel. Then you have this typical Land Rover layout with a gear shifter that sticks out here somewhat. Climate units, still easy to control also while driving. Push it, for example, for the seat heating. That's a cool system. Here is then also everything you control off-road wise. For example, here pumping car up or down, hill descent control, then the off-road gearing, pulling car neutral first, then click this button. And then on the right side, this will get even more interesting. This is then here the terrain select. So you can then choose this here or touch on the screen for the different off-road driving modes. And you know, like sand, mud ruts, grass, snow, and so on. Or just let the car do its job. Most of the time, it will be enough. Zoom or deal to the screens. Lower part is then USB-C and USB-A supply and another normal charger. And then a little space in the lower area, a very open part. And above that, adaptive cup holders. We don't have the jump seat. And a nice fabric cover once again for the armrest. Really large and a big cubby hole underneath. Digital instruments. You can see here, left side speed, right side is the RPM meter. And then you can also change what you want to see actually in the middle part. So we can change the layout right here or also what we want to have as the information. And for example, for the GPS, you can also set it to full map. And then you have the GPS map in there. Doesn't look too fancy, does the job. I've seen better software for digital instruments. Into the screen, the software has been updated. Things are easier than before, easier accessible and with auto Apple CarPlay is available. Then the GPS looks like this. Everything is more responsive really a better processor unit they've put in here right now so that's a crucial change if you compare it to you know a uh, infotainment system so far and you see it doesn't have such a menu depth so to say everything easily accessible this is the options list for example brightness of the screen you can also set it right here and then let's check out the camera view which is quite impressive so now, you know the top option you can have, especially when you're off-road check out the individual tire we also see the other defender next to us and then you can also have this fake drone from above and actually pick an individual camera wherever you want to see it there's also this off-road mode for that available Le left and right tire for example right there and this is also that you have um, like the clear view to the front when you cannot see what's going on under on under the hood. And this is the CarPlay integration. See here, it goes all over the screen. That's good. And a little sound check. Hmm, so far nice. I think um, the reason for that is that we have a nice sound is also, um, you know, the whole area here. Everything is wide open and maybe good for the whole resonance. 
this top mirror, either normal one or then on demand, you can make it a camera. And this is, for example, handy. We see the sand pit behind us, the hard sand pit behind us. This is actually quite cool when you have on the rear everything loaded up that you could not see for real to the rear, but from the outside camera, you can still. So this is a nice feature and especially that you can pick how you want to have it. And a sidekick to another vehicle, because here we have the optional panoramic roof. Again, with 1 meters 86 or 6 with 1, no problem with the headroom, even though we have the panoramic roof here. There's a cover here, electric, and then we can also open the whole stuff. And it yeah, goes quite the way all over the vehicle. So it's also nice for off-road driving, right? Yeah, I know off-road driving, we are supposed to have everything closed doesn't open too wide, although in the opening there, but still, even more sunshine. As for the rear passengers, so this is a bench that goes all the way through. Also, we have the nice soft material at the back part of the door, and basically the very same look. So the whole seat setups could be five, six, or seven seats, depending if you have the jump seat in the front, and also if you have the additional third seating row. First of all, to the second seating row, and there's a quite handy solution here indeed, with, you know, a handrail right there. It's quite cool. Here at the back part, we have a USB supply of the seat, and this one would be like an, for an iPad holder or something, and you can see you really have reasonable space here in the legroom, so this platform is using more space than, for example, the other like high-top luxury vehicles they have in the lineup. A lot of legroom. This is the driver's seat to my, to my position with one meters 86 or six foot one. And I even forgot in the front about the headroom because I don't even have to talk about the headroom because there's so much headroom left. Um, so there's not really an issue at all. So upright seating position here, very comfortable, nice and a lot of space. Also when I move to the middle seat here, so there's one of the cars where I can very, very well sit in the middle seat. Of course, the car is so high that the off-road transmission tunnel doesn't really interfere with the interior, so that's pretty cool. And also to the seating, no problem at all. Really nice that we also have the bright seating here. And we have these additional windows here on both sides that leave some more light from the top part. It's also, of course, a quote of the past model, but you know, some of the nice emotional features, definitely. So what we can do here is move the whole bench. Maybe let go to the outside, that's easier. So there we go. So a little more to the front, then we have more trunk left, or then again for the maximum leg room. Furthermore, we can also have this handle here, and then we can adjust the back part of the seat a little bit, like this, or a little bit more to the rear, like a sleeping position. And we can also, with this handle, flip the whole thing already. So this is possible. Then in the middle part, we can also have adaptive cup holders. It's also possible just to flip the middle seat here as a ski hatch. And this is also with a robust layer then here on top from the trunk, like that. Last but not least, this middle console there. Let me turn on the ignition. So here in the rear, you also have another climate unit and a lot of supplies in the lower part, USB-A, USB-A. Um, and then there's also an additional climate unit that is on when the whole engine is running. Well, if you ever wondered why these off-road cars have a sideways opening trunk, well, it is because of the replacement tire that is just too heavy. I mean, imagine flipping that up to the top part or having gas thrusts that are so strong to do that, so it's easier. And however, it's still a lot of weight on these hinges on the inside and they are now stronger than before, especially right here, you know, in these areas. So let's see how that one plays out. Very practical trunk here, however, and also with a robust floor, definitely. This soft top cover is of course, and again, something that has this old school character. Um, you have to deinstall the manual here at the sides. And you know, that's some work. It's not a real practical solution. Again, it's more about quoting the past. Um, not sure if you just leave it like this then. Here again, you can have a better view. So pretty nice area we have available there. And I can also give you some measurements. And this is the length then. It's 
about 86 centimeters and the width is even more than a meter so it's like one meters and ten that's pretty cool there's also a real power socket here on the right side that's fancy and then there's the third seating row with or without it the floor cover here will be the same just when you have the later to come plug-in hybrid version it you know we lose a little bit of height other than that here in the six and seven seater option you have storage right there it's not really uh, for the photo days um, but that's it in the other version you have a little bit more space than here underneath here however you can flip up the seats like this like this oh. takes some work because they're Oh, it's a little bit close here with the seats. Here we go. So now we can also flip up the head restraints. And then let's see how that one plays out soon. But last but not least, the overall height here. And that's pretty impressive. It's almost 90 centimeters. And when we have the normal niveau, the loading sill here is also at about 90 centimeters. Quite good to remember. So now some manual workout, flipping these seats with the top part and then you can slide them actually like this and then you can get inside and of course you can use the handle here once again. And here we go. So and there's of course not so much leg room left here but what I have done actually, actually is putting this side here, the right side, to the front. I put the bench to the front so that I could still sit there in the second row. And then the question is, do I still fit in behind that? And very, very closely, yes, very closely. But um, yeah, not really for tall adults here, but we couldn't have expected that. There's a top tether at the back part here, by the way. Um, so when we slide this one back, like this, here we go. So I still survive and you can see how the legroom plays out and here in the front. Again, on the right side here, this is still how I could sit there. On the left part, not really anymore. I would get too close with my knees, definitely. So we have to be a little bit smaller here. Um, headroom, by the way, that's still totally fine. So it feels very spacious and very light, especially with the bright ceiling. However, there's no isofix on the third seating row so also not suitable for child seats so it's just then like for shorter trips and for let's say older children that would be probably the suitable target group and now you maybe wonder wait a minute shouldn't it be maximum of eight seats when you have the jump seat like three three two no that's actually not possible so only five six or seven because when you have the jump seat here in the middle there needs to be sufficient leg room in the rear, also to the middle seat. And that will only be possible with the movable bench setup, which is also a requirement for the seven seater. So that follows then when you have the seven seater, you have a movable bench. And as soon as the bench can be moved, the jump seat is not allowed. So that has like safety reasons just for the amount of persons. Would be wouldn't be a problem. In Germany, for example, you can move nine persons, including the driver. So that's not a restriction, but it's more a safety thing. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the all-new Land Rover Defender. Driving near the 3-liter six-cylinder petrol engine, the P400. Now also with the MF, the mild hybrid technology. Let's see if that saves a little bit of the fuel consumption. So we we'll start just to roll and I'll also talk about comparison to other SUVs, comparison to Range Rover or Land Rover models internally. And what I can say is that this rugged off-road feeling is somehow transported already to the road. The Land Rover Discovery comes closer to it, but indeed, not only the, the layout, but also seating position-wise, the square dimensions and so on, you do get more off-road feeling. Of course, you cannot compare it at all to the previous Defender generation, completely different cars. The only thing that is shared is the name nothing else basically yeah and the off-road capabilities but it's a totally different ride you cannot really compare it so indeed rather to a discovery but the discovery feels more street-ish 
and this one indeed you know from the whole layout how you sit and how you see everything does feel more off-roadish already here in street driving this car is also mounted with street tires so we have the good setup actually for the road when you're in dry off-road situations it won't make such a difference of course the off-road tires more play a role when you have muddy conditions we have the air suspension in here and the good thing is that you normally worry at the moment I like cars with air suspension that really say hello I'm an air suspension I'm here and I'm not anything else you know so that you feel the air suspension and that is still the case with this vehicle you still feel it is an air suspension and that's really good so also when you're going like left and right you feel the car is shaking up a little bit but that's in this case I think a good thing because we want to have this off-road character actually and this also accounts for a good traveling comfort. You have the upright seating position, the air suspension is set on a soft, comfortable note. So that's really cool. And also difference to some Range Rover models, which are more set out to some sport here, yeah, you know, in relation on-road driving. So still perfectly suitable for on-road. The steering feeling is, let's say, it doesn't give you like a good connection to the road. Um, it's not so much dead zone area, however, so you, the commands are transported, but it also has this off-road notion, so you steer more way actually. Off-road, that's really important to keep the car also straight and calm and so on. And I think it's okay that they also transport that to the road. If you compare, for example, a Mercedes G-Class, the G-Class feels definitely sportier, so this one here more off road corrector than the G-Class from the subject of driving feeling. Of course, also a Mercedes G-Class is very off road capable, but with the new generation, they also tuned it a little bit more for road driving because G-Class is even more used on road, more than you know than the Defender customers probably will. And if you compare a Jeep Wrangler, for example, the Wrangler feels a little bit more off-road authentic I would say so um, and I think that's even another step that the Jeep Wrangler is probably even more bought for off-road purposes than the new Defender is actually um, however the Wrangler of course we know there's one catch is the crash safety so you know in first few corners actually quite silent in here also at 50 kilometers an hour or like 25 30 miles an hour so a very comfortable decent feeling Mm, this car just has a little bit more character because of the, you know, of the history quotes, the heritage quotes that, you know, just gives you a little bit more fun when driving. And again, I like that we have something of this off-road character while driving on the road. And this is also a reason why people would go for this vehicle to have an off-road feeling even when driving on-road, because you're not doing that off-road driving like every single day. And still maybe you want something of that feeling when driving on the street and I think this is definitely working here and with the Discovery for example which is also an off-road capable car tested it also in, in Utah um, you know but but still this one does give you more off-road character now going on to the motorway also see how it's an insulation at higher speeds and there will also soon come sort passage where we can floor it all out there are different driving modes available as I said earlier you can pick them here and but usually leaving it all in auto mode will also do just fine noise insulation here still at 80 kilometers an hour really good so it's a very silent and relaxed ride that again fits to the air suspension and the upright seating position and so on so you know i'm an off-road fan also like four wheels and also two wheels so i really like when cars have this character you know in the tunnel you can see also how the illumination is here at the steering wheel for example and the infotainment screen and so on so nothing with fancy ambient lighting here whatsoever but still we're in a tunnel and it's very silent once again in here so this would probably be if you really compare past generation to this new generation the most dramatic change noise insulation and now we can accelerate it out so let's, let's let's car pass we have free way to go 
and just drop to 70 kilometers an hour and then we'll accelerate it out, do some kick down and let's go. That's 160 kilometers an hour and I think for the Defender is also enough speed and still here, I mean, the air suspension is quite soft, yes, and steering doesn't give me a good connection to the road. Um, but when I do a lane change here now at 160 km an hour, stable enough. But you have to bear in mind, this has this off-road character, so um, shouldn't experiment too much with it, actually. So it's, of course, not then the safest feeling, not out, you know, not set out to be that way. But noise insulation still at a quite good niveau. Um, even more important will be at the standard autobahn speed of like 130 km an hour or 80 miles an hour, which is exactly like this here now at the moment. Um, yeah, at, at these higher speeds you feel a little bit of this very upright A-pillar, a little bit more wind noise is definitely, so that does change. You cannot deny the pure character of the vehicle than in this case. So, but here now, like 120. That's perfectly silent and yeah, I think um, for a normal traveling speed this is actually also then totally fine. So very good noise insulation at the lower speeds, but here then when you get even faster, yeah, I mean it's still okay. So over I'm I think I'm you know quite satisfied with that. Here again now you see it's just so much fun that you can shake up the car. It's even softer the air suspension than like normal other is like think about Mercedes GLE, which doesn't have like a true offer character, um, but already a soft air suspension, but way stiffer the air suspension in there than in here. So that's probably the thing I like best with this vehicle is the soft air suspension. We see oh I have to back greener brakes now. Oh you feel the weight of the car <laughs> pushing also like the air suspension pushing to the front. But I think you got that this um Big petrol engine has a lot of power, so will be especially interesting for our fans in the US. Um, it will consume a lot of fuel, yes. Um, MF technology will not help that much uh, in this case. The sound was also quite decent, definitely. Um, German and UK customers will probably still go for these four cylinder diesels. Um, prices, of course, will also go higher when you have higher spec and. Uh, bigger engine and so on and so on. The overview, by the way, is due to the upright building style of the windows quite good when you look around. Um, that's really nice. And One more word to assistant systems, setting the cruise control here. This is just a normal cruise control in this case here. And there's also lane keep assist, they've upgraded that. Um, there's no blind spot monitor here, um, however the, the side mirrors are quite massive and you already heard it here, so at the moment the side assist is active and it's also actively keeping me in lane somewhat, so um, let's not steer, I'll just you know keep my hands on the steering wheel in case, but now I'm getting to the side of the road bit by bit, let's see, there's no reaction from that in this case. Hmm. Not satisfied with that. So there was a situation earlier where it did react actually. So maybe I can induce it once more. Yeah, here we go. See this counter steering. So now it worked. So it seems to be that before I was like slightly, slightly, slightly getting over the white line. Car didn't realize it. But when you're a little bit, you know, in a in a different angle then to the side, then the car is realizing it and is counter steering. So and then also saying, keep your hands on the steering wheel, even Thomas. <laughs> so, oh, and by the way, the um, top, when I put it to the digital mirror, I can, should do it while driving here, of course, I can also, said it before, change the brightness and also the height. So I can set it a little bit lower, or maybe for automatic driving, a little bit higher, this angle of the camera, so I can see better what's going on behind me. But I think it's a quite clear view, and the thing is also that, here, when you have the replacement tire mounted, which is usually the case, it gives you a better view than through the camera, because obviously it doesn't look through the tire. This was here a corner um, in past times. You could drive this one basically with unlimited speed, 
um, obviously it didn't work out too well for some people. Um, so they reduced massively in speed. But this was a very good testing corner for me to see how capable the cars are, you know, in the dynamic ride. Not possible to test it right here today. But now again, go a little bit faster. You have this little more sonorous sound on the six cylinder. This will be then the difference if you go for the, you know, for the, for the small engines. The upcoming plug-in hybrid will also be very interesting for sure, and not only for taxation <laughs> reasons, but of course also just for driving and having electric moments and, and so on and so on. So a very relaxing autobahn ride. Um, this car is very well to drive for a longer road trip, for example. Um, really looking forward to do that, for example, with the, again with the soft air suspension. And you know, would I go for this one or for uh, Discovery? Discovery is also like a very nice vehicle. I feel that this one has a better steering feeling. Um, so this has been upgrade infotainment system, of course, as well. And I think what makes this one here also special is the, let's say, less pretentious character the less luxurious atmosphere, this is a reason to go for it, you know? So, a um, little bit more practical, a little bit more rugged, and indeed, I think they've done a good job in transporting this also to the driving part. Now, if we look at the competitors, because prices here, as I said earlier, can easily go up to like 80K or something, and then there's really like harsh competition from the outside, not exactly this concept, you know, with the true off-road character. But yet again, if you just use it on road, then also other competitors play a role. And of course, driving dynamics wise and the quality, um, you know, of, of materials on the inside, the whole impression, um, that is in, for example, better like with the Audi, BMW, Mercedes competition. So this then would be the pick where the character should stand out. And to this respect I, respect, I think that this car has a better chance to, let's say, the standard competitors than some of the other models because it has this unique driving feeling, as I said, you know, more rugged, off-roadish and so on. And this is what it makes it special so that other aspects maybe count a little bit less. The 8-speed automatic gearbox, by the way, is doing a great job. So very smooth transitions between the gears. You can also put it to the so-called sport mode, by the way. Then the gears are turned up higher. So it will help the acceleration even more. And also when you're, for example, going down and using the engine brake a little bit more. However, this one here as an MHF maybe doesn't play it too, too big role. Here now, the S mode, here it gears are kept up and you can just put the shifting lever to the right again. Then we're once again in a normal D driving mode. And then we're back to the normal shifting where you would usually leave this vehicle. So I think good to handle, easy in the steering, but still with a decent feeling, off-road character from steering and especially soft air suspension. Interesting, it's a completely new vehicle, cannot compare it with the predecessor model and standing out from the competition with this unique character, even though and we see on paper, you know, from the technology pieces and so on, all set in the off-road thing. Other competitors have more modern technologies as for suspension, for example, or um, infotainment, voice input, and so on. Yes, but because this one has, has this distinctive look and the feeling it conveys, it stands more out, also inside the model portfolio from Land Rover than anything else. And now to our off-road driving mode <laughs> in Medias Res. So we pump the air suspension up. We have the off-road gear reduction here as well. So, and when you put in the off-road gear reduction, by the way, then the suspension automatically goes up because the car suspects, oh, this guy probably wants to do some off-road driving. 
Um, by the way, offer gear reduction to the normal one is about three to one. So when we are here in the third gear, it would be the first gear in the normal driving end. So that means we have more power at slow speeds here with the off-road gear reduction. And so then it's also easier when you, for example, have a steep uphill here and so on. By the way, when the air suspension is all the way up, you have actually a little bit less comfort. It looks like you have more dampening, but you um, must think about that you also have less dampening in the other direction. So overall, it's less comfortable to drive with the suspension all the way up. Here now, some big rocks on the ground. You see it's shaking a lot, but the cool thing is here with off-road vehicles with air suspension that it's still somewhat comfortable, although it's a very rough riding. And when you do not have air suspension, this is not always the case. Here I can also put in a camera view. Um, so this is really helpful here in this off-road view because sometimes I cannot really see what's going on and then the camera view is definitely helping me. You can also adjust it like which camera perspective you want to have. Of course, um, for off-road driving, this is uh, at the moment the, the rear perspective, which is not that helpful. The most helpful one is always the front perspective because you do not see what's going on there in the front hood and so on. So we can also have the differential locks here if the visualization at the moment I'm in terrain response auto mode. So the car is automatically doing that. That's of course quite cool, but you can also set a mode for yourself. But usually the car then automatically does everything on its own. I mean, in situations like these, we could also drive without the off-road gear reduction that would work as well. So let's see um, if we can get the front camera view. So here we go. So this is the so-called um, transparent hood feature. Um, it shows me where the tires are actually. And then the front view is live. And what's underneath the tire is like, let's say, built up by the view we had before. And that's of course a quite nice feature, especially if I see, oh, do I hit some rocks there, which I cannot see, for example. So this is a very nice view down there. So next uphill approaching now. We also got a colleague driving here with us and that's of course good for you because then we also have another defender here on the camera perspective. Getting a little bit muddy now and our car here, if you remember this road driving part, does not have off-road tires but since it's not very slippery here today, it's also not like you know the biggest issue. So we get a some run up here. You hear the off-road gear reduction already applying a lot of power and this is you know, easy task for this vehicle. What we can also do is like hard exercises when I stop here just you know in this really steep and you see like we're like this it's a really steep uphill and then a little bit sliding because we do not have off-road tires but here a lot of power and there we are. This is of course really impressive. Remember we just drove through a small mud hole so the tires were a little bit wet and there were road tires so there we had a little bit of wheel spin so in this off-road mode of course a little wheel spin is actually necessary to get all the power on the ground um, but still this car mastered it very very well this is, looks really impressive from the outside and also I mean when you feel the g-forces here on the inside um, I mean the camera here, the onboard cameras don't really do it justice, but here like we could pick up flowers from the <laughs> from the passenger window. Again, easy job. Um, a lot of travel there from the suspension and again with the air suspension, really cool. So um, the great thing about this one here and also if you do compare it to an original Defender, this is all piece of cake and it's super comfortable at the same time. So it's also very easy you don't have, need to have much experience for these exercises then. Although, I mean, I've done a lot of different off-road trips now and uh, of course, always keep your thumbs out of the steering wheel that it will get dislocated at some point. Steering wheel is really set out to a good off-road drive so it doesn't move too much. That's coming quite handy here when off-road driving. 
And of course, always you know, steady, keeping it slow and so on. Now there's a nice water pit. This, of course, always even more fun looking at it from the outside. Slowly inside. Waiting depth, of course, 90 centimeters, way enough. You can also see the water then here on the, on the camera. And like driving through the water from the exterior is always more spectacular than from intro, from, because here from driving just, it's like, so what? <laughs> Now we're heading on to a steep downhill. We can play with the hill descent control. You can activate it just with a click of a button, but also when you have the off-road gear reduction set, then it's automatically on. And you change the speed here with the cruise control on the left side of the steering wheel, uh, on the right side of the steering wheel. So I set it now to minus, 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 like a um, low setting. Here I just basically approach it slowly and then I let go of the brake and then the yeah I'm not on the brakes yet at all here is in control is ruling everything 75% downhill wow really cool and I could also set the speed a little higher than when we for example like you know not such a steep downhill and now for example this is like a hardened sand area um, so it's not that slippery and at the same time a little bit rougher than as for the holes but here for, for example I could theoretically set the hill descent control to a little higher speed and then when just letting it roll we have a little bit more speed but it's also not going downhill that much so you can adjust that and once again I have to say really impressed on how comfortable off-road driving is still with this vehicle and of course even more capability if you compare them for example to a discovery. And now comparing the diesel D240, so 240 horsepower, 2 liter 4 cylinder diesel. So it's a <laughs> comparison now 4 cylinder versus 6 cylinder as well as the diesel versus the petrol. So, first of all, sound is of course something different. So the petrol sounds a little bit better, a little bit lighter, so to say. The diesel has, when you start it up, some kind of the typical diesel nailing sound, but it's actually quite well insulated, so can't complain um, too much about that. When you're just rolling, the driving feeling is more or less the same. Of course, we don't have too much power. The throttle input is indeed quite different. So whereas with the petrol, the throttle is very light and also reacts quite spontaneously. The throttle here with the diesel is a little bit more subtle, so to say. When off-road driving, this could actually be an advantage because you can drive a little bit more precise than here with the diesel. Um, but again, it's not that performant when you're driving on the road. However, since this is the car with the soft air suspension and the more look beat up, I would still say luxurious travel feeling. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that when the acceleration is less spontaneous, it's so, uh, yeah, it's such a bad thing here, you know. Um, after all, there's also a question about entry price, of course, um, which is a little bit higher than with the P400. Maybe at a later stage we can also test a smaller petrol or something. Here now you hear the diesel sound, but considering it's a small diesel, it's you know, it sounds quite sonorous actually already. We can also do acceleration here 50 to 100. Let's see how that one plays out and let's go. Plop, that's it. And you see, 
that takes a little longer while, but still there's enough torque and even just here with a two liter four cylinder, it will still be suitable for towing or something. So a um, lot of Defender customers also seek um, a vehicle that is really capable of towing and of course also able to tow these 3.5 tons no problem, even though you know have the smaller engines. So the driving feeling, all the same again, you can see how we have the off-road driving feeling. Again, I'm quite surprised by the new steering feedback, which, you know, oh, nice speedle, which uh, gives the off-road feedback, but yet again is giving you more feeling than, for example, the one of the Discovery, which is kind of dead, you know, in, in, in it all feeling. So they really worked on that steering feeling, definitely overall. And, you know, when you drive it, rather slowly there's not so much difference between the engines especially because diesel has this torque always so it's not that you would say oh it's super slow mm, it's indeed just that the petrol engine comes quicker especially when you are in the low rpm regions and you can say on the sporty side that's a little bit more fun to drive but i really have to say well, i'm not the biggest fan of diesels but here maybe it suits the car even a little bit better you know what i mean so in a way of this is not the car where it's a lot of fun to hit the throttle and push in the corners and so on so i think the more calm character of the diesel and also just with less horsepower input really suits the vehicle very well this could also then speak for the later to come plug-in hybrid because I also think that electric commuting does suit the vehicle, does suit the whole calmness and, and sovereign driving feeling and so on. So once again, a very nice impression and also with the good noise insulation here, once again, tested earlier, just when we go really, really high speeds, then this you know, square building style does play an effect. That's for example, the same also with the Mercedes G-Class. That's indeed something to consider if you Think about this off-road style vehicles like the Defender versus the Discovery or G-Class versus the g -Lee, that you have more wind noise at really high speeds. You know, can't, can't really deny that. So, but I think also a good impression to test the diesel here. And again, I say, I, you know, I would not, most of the time I would say like get the um, three, liter six cylinder petrol engine but in this case i really have to say you can be just as satisfied with the diesel i think and in our final conclusion we'll also take comparison then at the overall fuel consumption and now to our conclusion for the day with the all new land rover defender comparing old and new doesn't really make too much sense because it's a completely different vehicle you can rather relate to the other models that Land Rover or Range Rover have to offer. Closest it comes surely to the Discovery, but definitely a more off-roadish Discovery. You see it and you also feel it while driving, even more off-road capable. And also the on-road driving experience feels off-roadish. And that's also the reason why you would go for that vehicle. Approximately like you compare G-Class versus GLE at Mercedes. It just has exterior and from driving feeling this off-road carrier and also from the interior materials a little bit more rugged. We found that the material mix on the interior could have been made a little bit easier. They are very, you know, you know, just too many different elements and also too many different materials. So they could have kept it a little bit simpler, I think. Good upgrade there with the infotainment system, which is more intuitive than the systems we have seen before. Very impressive in the off-road capabilities, that's for sure. So hardly anything that this car cannot master in off-road driving. Then about the fuel consumption. With the diesel, we could score about like minimum consumption, seven liters or more kilometers, 34 MPG US, 41 MPG UK. And with the big petrol engine, six cylinder petrol engine, we could score some 10 liters on one kilometers, which would be 23 MPG US and about 28 MPG UK. So about three liters difference then between these two engines here in our first test. However, the diesel will have a little bit more advantage when you really hammer these vehicles and the consumptions go up. So 
weren't the worst results, but there are of course also no fuel consumption wonder with this weight you're carrying around. However, overall a very comfortable vehicle also for longer journeys because this soft off-road character also is transported into road driving, no real driving dynamics and so on, but that's also not expected. But this soft off-road character also helps you then on longer journeys. You can get a somewhat reasonable one for about 50,000 euros or dollars, depending then on the market where the three door or five doors more or less expensive. Usually the three doors, of course, less expensive. And it also depends on the standard equipment. There is some more standard equipment than with other Land Rovers, for example. I have to bear that in mind. However, it's not at all a cheap vehicle. So I said earlier, when you pick the big petrol engine, spec it up a little bit, you can also score some 80K or something. And then it's, of course, quite expensive. So for having this more rugged feel or look to it, I think it would have been even cooler when it would be positioned price-wise below the Discovery. That, have, you know, that would have been like a crush to the market. At these prices, you have to wonder if you take the comp competition into account, which have so more other new modern things and better combine the comfort and the driving dynamics. So couldn't really say that it is top of the market, but combining this off-road character and also applying to the on-road, that is the unique thing about this vehicle. So that's the conclusion for the day. Hope you enjoyed this special episode. Give me your feedback and see you next time.